Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. You know, the other day I put a safe, a center console safe, in my Toyota Tacoma. And there have been a lot of questions uh, regarding that safe along the lines of functionality, limited use, things like that. So I thought I'd run over. There are a few things to consider if you're going to put a safe in your Tacoma. You know, like with a lot of mods, there are always uh, a little bit of give and take when you install something. So let's go ahead. We're going to jump in. I'm going to run through these for you. Some things that, you know, I really didn't consider myself before I had done this. Now, what I've got here, of course, is the center console safe. You can see it right there. Mine is operated with a key. We'll get to that in just a minute. It just pulls open and then, and I'm going to put a light in there so you guys can actually see down in there. But, uh, it has space to store, you know, anything that you'd want to lock up down there. You can see right now I've got some pretty valuable stuff, you know, uh, a USB cord and a uh, key, if you will, for the lug nuts and then some plastic gloves. I think there's some hardware down there, too. Anyway, uh, let's uh, start right off here, I guess. Number one, let's close this up is this unit right here, the tray. I know a lot of people get these. A lot of people have them. Will it fit with a safe in the center console? And here's your answer. Uh, no, it does not fit. You cannot put it in there. Now, maybe, and I might try this myself. I might actually try to adapt this a little bit because there is a little bit of room there. It would mean cutting something out of the bottom. I'll probably try that on a future mod. But unmodded, if you will, the tray itself obviously does not fit in there. No way you're going to get this thing in there. Number two, USB port access. Well, first of all, you can't see it because of my light and junk in there, but the ports are exposed down there. There are a couple of USB ports down there that you can plug into. And this type of safe, and it's uh, not the drop-in kind, it's really more of a lid bolted into the bottom, uh, leaves access for that. But can you put a USB cord in there? So, luckily I have a cord, let's say it was plugged in down there somewhere, and I'm gonna shut the lid. Now, you could shut the lid. You can see I do have it shut and I do have the cord laying out. My only concern with that is pinching of that cord. I mean, it is going to go against the edge of the tray here, as well as uh, the ledge you can see right down here. Uh, so it's going to pinch it a little bit. Over time, I suppose, it could cut through the cord, and then you might have some kind of a short or something crazy like that. So while it could be used, and I mean, you could just put the lid down. Let's try that. Let's just put the lid down loosely and see if we can shut the lid. I mean, we could do it like that. You can see it comes out, but again, I would be pretty concerned about it pinching it too much and causing issues in the long run. So I would say no, probably not, at least not without some alteration. Next up, how about a key versus a dial versus an electronic punch kind of pad. The key, they never fail. Uh, they always lock, that's it, right? Pretty simple, ancient technology there. But we do have little dials, you know, little spin dials. You can put the code in, like on those old spy briefcases, you know? And then there's also electronic pads. My issue, you know, it's much quicker, in my opinion, to just uh, grab the key Stick it in, turn it, and you're in. If I've got to turn dials now, I have to focus more on that. I've got to start flipping dials, and it takes more time. And the reason I bring that up is because somebody had mentioned about accessing it quickly. It's much easier to stick a key in there than it is to try to fumble around those three or four dials to get the right number lined up. And you know they never line up perfectly the first time. you got to finagle them a little bit. As far as the electronic buttons... You know, as long as the battery doesn't go dead, and that's another concern, you better have access to the battery because if it's underneath and it goes dead, how in the world are you going to get in the safe? Maybe it has a key on it too, I don't know. But still, something you've got to more focus on to hit the right numbers to open the safe. 
Now, there is another option and it's probably pretty high tech and I'm not sure if it's really even available, but that's the old thumbprint thing. You know, where you'd have a pad under there, you put your thumb or finger or whatever on it and then it recognizes you and opens up. You know, the, the old biometric version. Again, I don't know if that's something that's actually available or not. I don't know why it wouldn't be, but it probably would cost a fortune. Now, I say I prefer the key. The only reason I can see that a key uh, might be an issue is if you've got it on your keychain and your truck is running. Well, obviously, to get the key from the ignition to the safe, you got to turn the truck off. Yeah, there's always trade-offs, plus and minuses when it comes to this kind of stuff. Next up, the lid style, which is what I have. This is basically a lid with a frame that bolts down underneath. And it does bolt in utilizing the two factory bolts that are down there. So somebody had commented that it bolts into plastic. It does not. It bolts in underneath in the same holes with screws as the OEM uh, setup is. But it is a lid, so it's not an insert that fits directly down in there. Eh, I don't really have an issue with that. Somebody had commented, well, gee, you could just cut right in through the side and then you'd have access because there's nothing here, right? It's not a drop-in. Yeah, that's true. But I think uh, sometimes you start to think to the absurd. You know, if somebody's going to come out to your truck with power tools, uh, lighting, a whole setup, maybe they're wearing some coveralls, maybe they've got some gloves on, maybe there's a whole team of people. Yes, they're going to get in your truck and I don't care what you put in. You know, if somebody brings a portable welder out to your truck or a portable torch and cuts through the side of the metal, yeah, they're gonna get in too. But you know, when do we start to become absurd? I'm really not concerned about this. I think it is just as functional as the drop-in type, in my opinion. Lastly, what about use? Does it limit your use? Well, obviously it does. I mean, if you're wanting to put a tray in there, you're not gonna be able to do that. Uh, you're not gonna be able to just pull that tray out and have quick access to everything down below. Although I did find sometimes when somebody else is in the truck and I've got something under there and I've got the tray and it's full of stuff, I got to pull it out, hand it to them, balance it somewhere, hope it doesn't fall down and spill all over the place. It's a trade-off. Yes, your use is going to be limited with any safe that you put in. If for no other reason, then you're going to have to mess with the lid uh, to be able to open it up and access what's down below. One of those little trade-offs. The good thing about this is there is a gap in between the lid itself and the edges. So you could sit some stuff up on top if you wanted to. Maybe throw some change up there. Maybe, I don't know, whatever, anything. So you could store a little bit on there. Again, the trade-off is you're going to have to move it when you open the lid. But you'd have to move whatever was there if you had a tray and you wanted to access down below anyway. Anyway, I just wanted to get on here. Those are a few considerations if you're installing a safe in the Toyota Tacoma in the center console area. Leave a comment. Let me know. Are these too much? You just can't handle it? I don't want to deal with these things. I'm not putting a safe in. Or do you accept that, yeah, it's going to be a little bit different in the truck? I'd be curious to know. Also, real quick, I do have two additional channels. Mod Driven, all about the Honda Civic and Rob Motive JT, all about the Jeep Gladiator. Check them out, and if you're interested, why not subscribe? And while you're at it, smash the subscribe button here too. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.